So now we're going to look at the Hess's law of summation. When we're adding several reactions together, when they add up to a, a final or new reaction, we add the heats of all those reactions together to get the final heat of that new reaction. Some rules that we use, if we reverse a reaction, so in the add up, we multiply the heat by a negative one. So we're changing the sign of, of the heat. If we multiply the reaction by a factor, so we add them up, we multiply the heat by the same factor. And when we're adding reactions, anything that becomes identical on both sides of the reaction as a reactant and a product, that gets canceled off. So uh, for this problem here, this is from the worksheet, the double-sided worksheet. We're looking for the heat of reaction for charcoal, carbon, reacting with oxygen to form carbon monoxide. So this is a way of you know, estimate the heat of reaction without actually measuring it. So in this particular case, we we're given two heats of combustion. Heats of combustion of charcoal, to form carbon dioxide, which is the normal product that is formed, the preferred product that's formed in oxidation or combustion reaction. Uh, and that was given us as a minus 393.7 kilojoules per mole. So it's heat of combustion, so heat of combustion of charcoal. So when we're given heat of combustion, we're given what compounds to combustion, you know, and that's the compound that we're having as the per mole on that uh, unit. So we can get rid of that per mole uh, because it's more convenient to work with that, that per mole. So we look at the coefficient of the carbon, it's coefficient of one. So we multiply this by one mole carbon and we're left with units of kilojoules. So the same number, minus 393.7, now with units of kilojoules. We're also given the heat of combustion of carbon monoxide. And again, it forms carbon dioxide. And that heat of combustion is at minus 283.3. I did the same thing. So it was one mole in front of carbon monoxide. So we multiply by one mole from monoxide. So our units turn into kilojoules. So it'll be the same number, minus 283.3. So we're looking for this reaction up here. Um, so the process I use is to try to get everything to cancel off um, or add up to this reaction. So I look for things that will add up to this reaction. And um, our carbon, charcoal, we have charcoal only once in these two reactions as a reactant in the heat of combustion of charcoal. This reactant works we want, but it has a factor of two in the reaction that we want. There's a factor of one in the reaction that we're given. So we're going to multiply this by two. So we're multiplying all the coefficients by two, and we're multiplying the heat by two also. So that means I'm not going to use this first reaction anymore. I have modified it to give me a better reaction. And that's better because I have my two carbon and two carbon. So I'm lining up those compounds. So this reaction has no carbon monoxide. So look at carbon monoxide to match up here. I need two carbon monoxides as products. I have one carbon monoxide as a reactant. So I'm going to reverse and multiply by two. So we'll reverse the product carbon dioxide now becomes a reactant with coefficient two. The reactants now become products with coefficient two carbon monoxide and one O2. So since I reverse it, it's going to be a negative. I multiply by two, so I'm multiplying by negative two for heat. So that turns that minus 283.3 into a positive 566.6. Now let's see if this will add up properly. My two carbon monoxides match. I have O2 as a reactant. I have the cross off that I'm not using anymore. So I have two O2 as a reactant. I only really want one. Oh, but I have one O2 as a product. So I'm going to cancel off that one product first. I'm left now with one O2 as a reactant, and that's what I want. So I have my one O2. I also have two carbon dioxides as a product, two carbon dioxides as a reactant. So they get to be canceled off. And this is my goal here to make sure I did my counting properly. So everything that I'm keeping 
is underlined and everything else has been crossed off. So there's nothing that has been addressed. That means that these two reactions will add up to this reaction. So I add up to two heats and end up with a minus 220 per 0.8 kilojoules. And we would normally write up here, delta H is our minus 220.8 kilojoules. So another type of problem that uh, has shown up um, derived from Hess's law is that we can have heats of formation, uh, formation reactions to form our uh, reactions. And what this works is if we take our formation reactions, formation reactions are forming the compound from the elements in their standard states. So that one compound will be the only product in all these. So since it's the product is lined up with what we we're looking for already, we're going to be adding these up. But we have to multiply by the coefficient of the final equation that we want. And then these are products, so to get them as reactions, we subtract them off. That means we're reversing all those um, reactant formation reactions. So it would be the products, um, adding the products, coefficient times enthalpy formation, subtracting the reactions, um, coefficients times the enthalpy formation. So to demonstrate this, uh, a rocket fuel here, aluminum powder with um, ammonium perchlorate. Uh, this has been used as rocket fuel, produces a lot of heat and gas, which they project out the rocket nozzle to propel the rocket up into space. So we're given our enthalpies of formation. These are ones that we generally don't have to memorize, although sometimes they don't give you the elements in the standard states. So aluminum, the standard state is at one atmosphere pressure, 25 Celsius at room temperature. And aluminum we know is solid at room temperature. So we're forming the solid room, aluminum from solid aluminum. It takes no energy. So all elements in the standard states have an enthalpy of formation of zero. So we might not give the enthalpy of formation of an element in a standard state. Everything else has to be given. So all the enthalpies of formation have been given up here. So we just have to put them into this equation. So we're going to start off with our products. So our coefficient one times the enthalpy of formation. And this is my system for just keeping track of everything. So outside the inside the parenthesis is our enthalpy of formation as given with its sign, whether it's positive or negative. And then outside, the number is the coefficient from the balance equation. And then the sign, whether I'm adding or subtracting, showing whether it's a product which I add or a reactant which I subtract. So I'm doing the one times our negative 1676 plus one times negative 704.2 plus three times our positive 90.2 plus six times our negative 241.8. So that's, that's all the products. Now I start subtracting reactants. So minus three times the zero, minus three times the negative 295. Run that through the calculator and I end up with minus 2675.4 kilojoules. So it's very exothermic, which makes it a, a very good rocket fuel, along with the fact that it makes gases that can help with propel all the material out of the nozzle and push the rocket up into space.